The 2022 Kia EV6 is among the newer options in the mainstream EV game. It looks insane, its charging tech is ultra fast, and it's one of the best new cars on sale today, period. This particular car is the Range Hero 2. It's rear wheel drive with the bigger battery pack. So in today's Inside EVs review, we're gonna answer these questions. Is the rear wheel drive version the one to have? Do we like the EV6 more than its immediate competitors? And is this car worthy of its $53,000 price tag? If you're new to the Inside EVs YouTube channel, thanks for stopping by. Do us a favor and subscribe and activate your notifications so that you don't miss any of the content we do on this year's newest and hottest electric vehicles. Now, assuming some of you may also be looking at the Hyundai Ioniq 5, let me point you in the direction of this little video right here. We just did a comparison test with the Ioniq 5 and the Volkswagen ID4. It has a ton of relevant information, pricing, charging speeds, all of that. So if you're considering the EV6 or either of those two, be sure to check out that video as well. But let's talk about this little spaceship. I don't mean spaceship in the sense that it's blazing fast to drive, I mean it it looks like a spaceship. Something about the EV6, I feel like an alien just designed it in their spare time. It looks completely foreign to anything else on the road in true Kia fashion. Remember that the EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 share a ton in common technologically. So the fact that they look so unique from each other is a real talent that the two automakers pulled off. But what this does that the Hyundai also does is kind of shrinks the design we thought, looking at the pictures of this before we ever saw it in person, that it was more uh, hot hatch size. That's not the case. In actuality, this has the same size wheelbase as a three-row Kia Telluride SUV. So it's a lot bigger than you think it is until you see it in person. The EV6 just does a great job of blending nice, smooth, rounded out bodywork with very aggressive, sharp angles. Take the front fascia, for example. You get this fender flare that runs right into this very, very angular headlight. And the running lights only serve to make that look more aggressive right into the tiger nose grill. It's a really neat look. These are 19 inch aero wheels and actually the design is tame compared to some of the other designs I've seen, but you can kind of pick and choose which one you like the most. I believe these are the standard option on the GT line, which is what this car is. We have pop out door handles, which is becoming a much more common trend, especially within EVs. Uh, at the rear, there is a massive tail light that spans the entire width of the vehicle. The only thing that I think this car is missing, and plenty of others have pointed it out, is there's no rear wiper. So for our friends in colder climates who deal with snow and sleet and dust and grime, you're gonna have a hard time seeing out of this. You're gonna have to wipe it down more often than not. Otherwise, this car's exterior design is a home run grand slam. Welcome to inside the EV6, which is fantastic, actually. It's just so cool and futuristic in here. Uh, I love the design of the cabin. They took these really neat materials and just made them stand out. There's this color altering pattern on the dash right here and these little neat lines that run top to bottom. The seats are actually made from recycled water bottles, apparently, which I don't know how the heck they do that, but they're also super comfortable. They're nice and wide, very cushy. There's good seats for long periods of time on the road. There's also this nice strip of ambient lighting that runs on the dash here, and it's tucked in other pockets of the cabin. You can change the light to a bunch of different colors too. The center console has storage down low for big water bottles and just bigger items in general. And when you open this up, it's really deep in here. You can fit a ton of stuff. Wireless charging pad, heated and ventilated seats. There are a ton of comfort features tucked inside of this car. The tech, however, is a little bit more of a mixed bag. So when I say mixed bag, it mostly is good, I promise. And that starts with these twin 12.3 inch displays. The one in front of you is all of your driver's information. And this one is a touchscreen which controls all of the car's data points, navigation, charging information, you can get into audio settings, all of it. Just like in plenty of other Kia products, this is super easy to interact with. The graphics are clear, it's responsive, it's quick. I love this touchscreen, don't get me wrong. My problem is when we get down to here and my many iPhone cords. USB-A, which is an older cable, is the only way that you can connect to CarPlay. So watch, when I do that, I plug in my phone and CarPlay comes up. There's no problem there. CarPlay takes up the entire screen too, which is something that I like. However, when you go to USB-C, which is the cable you get if you get any new iPhone or Android product, it's just to charge. You can only connect to CarPlay with USB-A. And this specific EV6 doesn't even have wireless CarPlay. That's only on the lower trim model. 
Let's get to the thing that actually bothers me inside of this car, and that is this control panel right here. This little button changes from the HVAC controls to volume uh, and just other menu settings in the car. That's all fine and simple so far. But when you're in the climate settings, this works as your temperature control, which makes perfect sense. However, it stays the same. It doesn't default back to one thing. So later on, when you're driving and you want to just make the car a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler, suddenly, you're blasting the Taylor Swift song you were listening to, and that isn't at all what you meant to do. It works the opposite way too. So you want more Taylor Swift, but you're on this setting. Your knuckle automatically hits the climate thing as you're driving. Suddenly auto climate control is on and you're freezing when all you wanted was more volume. I know I'm being a little bit dramatic, but I promise you that this solution wasn't the best case scenario for using a knob two ways. At the top of this video, I called this car a range hero, and that is exactly what it is. This has an EPA rating of 310 miles. It's better than the Ionic 5, Volkswagen ID4. If you are somebody who wants your EV to go the maximum amount of distance for a reasonable price, it's been nice hanging out with you, but you can stop watching here. Buy this car in this spec. However, for somebody who cares a little bit more about performance driving and how your car handles, let's talk about this for a second. The rear wheel drive version of this car makes 225 horsepower and 258 pound feet. For anybody who's coming from a gas car, gas crossover into an EV, that is going to feel more than sufficient. But if you wanted something that's quick, fun to drive and a little bit more explosive, man, the power difference between the dual motor and the single motor is pretty extreme. Dual motor is gonna cost $4,000 more on top of this, but you get 310 horsepower and 448 pound-feet. And having driven both versions, the difference in acceleration is massive. Beyond that, because I thought, okay, you know, you remove some of the weight, remove some of the complexity, this car would be better in the canyons, a little bit more nimble. It's just not the case. You put this into a corner, and the first thing that happens is the tires give up. And then beyond that, it just falls to understeer almost immediately. The positive trade-off is that the suspension is super compliant and very comfortable while you're driving, but there's just so much body motion in any sort of cornering scenario that it's just, it's not dynamic in the slightest. So I don't think anybody's buying a rear wheel drive EV6 for performance reasons, but I'm a little let down in this department. Positive note is that this car does a lot of EV things really well. It offers full one pedal driving. So with the paddle shifters here on the steering wheel, you can put it in a mode where it will go all the way down to zero without ever having to hit the brakes. I know not everybody loves regen and EVs, but you get all the adjustability here. And if you don't want it, just turn it off. For those of you that do like it, like me, you can use it all the time. I also like that it shows you a battery percentage indicator right in front of you. So I know at all times, right now, I have 160 miles of range and I have 61% of the battery left. It's not just a bar that's getting lower and lower. I know the information uh, and I can make adjustments and know when to go to a charging station when I need it. Welcome to the Electrify America station, in this case filled with a bunch of new and cool EVs charging all around us. Let's talk about charging with the EV6 because this is a category where this car absolutely excels. Now, right now would be the time where I lift this up and show you the household cord that the car comes with standard, but it doesn't. The Kia EV6 does not come with any sort of level one charging. So hypothetically, you can drive it home from the dealership and not be able to plug it in at home at night, which is kind of strange, but I guess the battery pack is so big that they just didn't think it was necessary. On a level one charger, this car takes 68 hours to charge. That is not going to be your best case scenario without a doubt. The most common option for everybody will be obviously to install a home charger, uh, level two charging, in which case at 240 volts, this car will charge overnight in about seven hours and 10 minutes. Really easy, just plug it in at night, wake up the next morning and it's all done. Here at a level three charger, when you have a 350 kilowatt machine, it goes fast. It goes very fast as a matter of fact. It'll do 10 to 80% in 18 minutes if all conditions are right. Now we have an in-depth breakdown on the charging curves in this car on InsideEVs.com already uh, if you want information on that. But across the board, this car is just blitzing fast. There is one other cool thing to mention with charging. 
and that's this adapter. It comes with the car in the back. This works with vehicle to load charging. So what that means is when the car is not plugged in, you plug this right into the very same charging port. And then on the other end, you can see that it has a little household outlet. So you can plug in appliances, blenders, anything for a tailgate to kind of keep the party going. Uh, that's a really neat capability that both this and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 share. So I've already told you that I prefer the all-wheel drive version thanks to its extra power and extra fun, really. But let's talk about the EV6 compared to its closest rivals, starting with the most obvious, the Ioniq 5. That car is nearly identical in terms of price and specs. I prefer its exterior design and its interior is just a little bit more practical than the Kia. Then you move outside of Hyundai Kia to things like the Mustang Mach-E. The Mustang does drive better than this car, no doubt, but the EV6's faster charging speeds and overall style make it a better option to me. Now the ID4 is less expensive than all of those options, but that's pretty much the only thing it has going for it in comparison. So all in all, is this car worth $53,000 before incentives? Yes. Absolutely yes. And actually I'm doing something I never do, which is to tell you to spend even more money to get the all wheel drive version. Even if you don't, the EV6 is fantastic in just about any form. Thanks for watching.